Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my weekly review. Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here, meeting my icon, Catherine Isabel here. Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my weekly review of DC's Legends of Tomorrow on the CW. Looks like we've seen the mid-season premiere, Season 3, Episode 10, Daddy Darkest. So yeah, definitely really, really good to have Legends back. I know it's on a new day, new... Uh, I don't know if it's a new airtime, but it's definitely a new day. It's on Mondays now instead of Tuesdays, um, which is uh, which is okay. I mean, I, I actually usually have Mondays off, except my you know girlfriend's usually over on Mondays, and uh, she hasn't watched any of the Arrowverse shows, um, so I still have to wait till Tuesday. But still seeing it a little bit earlier. Um, but I know that can kind of potentially like screw with ratings or something like that. Uh, I know it throws some people off just having it on like the you know, on a Monday, you know, like the first uh, work day of the week for some people. Um, and, you know, I've seen, like, all these, like, articles on Facebook saying, oh, Legends, Legends is in trouble. Um, you know, the ratings aren't very good, you know, so let's have this group from Supergirl replace them. <laughs> um, and things like that. It's hard to explain. Um, but I don't think people realize uh, Legends ratings are, you know, pretty good. They're pretty decent and stable right now. Um, not quite as good as The Flash's ratings, but they're actually, they've actually had consistently higher ratings this season than Arrow, so I think that's pretty good. And you know the CW's not going to cancel Arrow <laughs> right now, um, so if, uh, Legends is doing better than Arrow, I think we're in the clear. Um, you know, by the way, I'm behind on Arrow by, like, three episodes, maybe four, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I guess my interest is sort of just, uh... Is flat with that right now. I mean, I like Oliver, I like Slade a lot, but I don't know, just something, a few things bog got show down, Felicity, among, among other uh, elements. Um, I just have found Legends ever since I caught up on it to be uh, a much more entertaining show all around, from the characters, from the premise, everything like that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Alright, so let me fix that. Okay. Um, and this episode I liked a lot. Um, of course, uh, a lot of people were excited for it because of John Constantine, Matt Ryan, you know, being, uh, or appearing in this episode. And, you know, I remember reading at one point that he was going to be a more permanent part of the team, but, you know, that's obviously not the case. But it's still good that they have him pop up here and there, and it made sense within, uh, the story going on in Legends right now with, uh, Malice, who I think is actually shaping up to be a pretty good villain. Um, I definitely like the atmosphere that comes with them when Sarah's, you know, in that world. Um, you know, in her head and everything. And we find out the girl uh, Constantine is trying to save is actually Damien Dark's daughter after, you know, the uh, main reality where Oliver, you know, killed him and at the end of season four and everything. So she's been t taken to, like, different institutions and she's, you know, being possessed and things like that. Um, but for some reason, Malice also has a particular interest in Sarah, um, which is interesting. I'm sure we'll find out more about that. And so, uh, you know, Constantine gives his help and, you know, trying to shake off the matter and things like that. And I enjoyed it. Maybe the best part of the episode, though, was, uh, you know, Rory, uh, Mick watching, um, you know, the football game and just, uh, shutting down everything else. <laughs> it's fourth down. Um, it, it was a lot of fun. It's still, it was still pretty cool having Citizen Cold around Wentworth Miller. 
Um, although I, I don't think they made as much use of him as they could have. Like, I know he's not there. You know, like, Captain Cold, he's not there, Snart. Um, but I was still kind of expecting a moment where it almost felt like they connected as they would have. Or, like, some kind of bending thing where it almost seemed like him for a minute. I don't know. I, I think they should have done something like that. But I think he's supposed to appear, like, one more time on The Flash or something. Then Miller's supposed to be done with the role. Um, which was unfortunate because I think they could have utilized him more. But who knows? He could pop up at least, like, once again in the future sometime. But, you know, he's still made for a fun dynamic with the team, even if he is a little bit nicer and everything like that. <laughs> um, like with uh, Sarah talking to Sharp, you know, he came in and, you know, talked about what a, what a thing they have going, or like how uh, she obviously has a crush on Sarah. I, mean, I, I like the Sharp and Sarah thing they're building, I actually find it kind of enjoyable. Which is why the Constantine and Sarah thing kind of throws me off a little bit later. Um, but Sarah kind of says she sees, uh, basically sees Sharp as a nice girl, and she's the she's the girl to, you know, go, uh, try and do an exorcism or something like that. Um, although despite that, I will say Sarah and Constantine did have good chemistry, Matt Ryan and Katie Lotz, of course. Um, yeah, so it wasn't like the worst, you know, hookup in the world. Um, and it was kind of built off of the moment and stuff like that too. So, you know, it, it was just sex, it was what it was. And it doesn't have to be more than that, as they both acknowledged. Um, <laughs> I definitely like when, uh, they got into an argument over who seduced the other. And then, uh, you know, Constantine think he is cleverly talking about sex and, you know, but not talking about sex in a weird way. And then Sarah said, oh, thank you, you know, thanks for the shag. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's funny. Um, I do like the effects of the, you know, like the red eyes. Um, this definitely, uh, this episode definitely had a lot of, like, supernatural vibes too, which isn't a bad thing. Um, but I do watch Legends for a different reason, Supernatural for a different reason, but, you know, still pretty good. Um, like I said, I definitely like, uh, how Miles is being built up as a villain, and Amya's, uh, relative, you know, she tries to, uh, who I still like seeing, because she had a pretty good role in the originals in Season 3, um, who she tries to reach out to, seeing her as the one potentially that she has to save, um, which is interesting, it made the thread of her a little more dynamic for the season I think, you know, after she attacks Nick and everything. So I, I like how that was added a little, little bit more off or it was a little bit more fleshed out I guess I should say. Um, you know, Ray was also a lot of fun this episode. Um, and you know, there wasn't much more that went on. You know, it was basically just uh, Constantine trying to get Sarah to uh, outwill Malice, which she did temporarily, but he tells uh, you know, he says to others later that, you know, at some point it's going to take over her, so you got to use this, uh, you know, gun when that happens. Um, so it's definitely still building, and, uh, you know, it's kind of weird that you just want to have Constantine stick around after that until they're done dealing with this threat, but, you know, it is what it is. Maybe it would be over too soon if Constantine is always around. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I never actually watched the Constantine show, but now I'm thinking I should, because it definitely seemed like my cup of tea. Um, but I really think they should make a Constantine continuation, a solo series on the CW. I don't see why not. There's a lot of fan demand for it. Um, either that or actually make him a regular character on here. But who knows? Uh, yeah, either way, though, I like this mid-season premiere. Um, I'm giving it about an 8.9 out of 10. Uh, I'm just really happy to have Legends back, and I'll do a separate video on this later. But I'm going to uh, C2E2 in April, Chicago Comic and Entertainment Expo. Um, where uh, Katie, Katie Lotz, uh, Sarah fucking Lance is going to be there, as well as Brandon Routh, Ray Palmer, and uh, Mick Arori, you know, Dominic Purcell. Um, very excited about that, you know, they're going to have a panel and everything, uh, really excited to meet all of them. That, that's going to be pretty fun, I think, uh, especially Katie Lotz. Uh, I'm excited. <laughs> uh, okay, before I start geeking out, um, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.